everyone. Welcome back to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. Once again, another week, another opposition preview video. Um, funny enough, we had a uh, True Faith Newcastle United podcast on the last week, and now we've got Blue Monday, Ipswich Town. Joe, uh, thank you very much for joining me, mate. First time we've ever actually had Ipswich on, on the Toffee Blues channel. Yeah, it's been a, been a long time since we've played each other, isn't it? Mainly down to our ineptitude than anything else. Yeah, certainly. It's it's been a while since uh, since I've switched. I've been in the league, but first season back after quite a while. What what have been your thoughts so far on um, on Ipswich Town? Um, I'm sort of relatively pleased with how it's gone. It's been a difficult start, I think, as most people would expect. Coming up, two leagues on the bounce is sort of just being promoted to the Premier League is hard enough. Let alone coming up twice in a row, really, with a team still with the team that was in League One for us. But I guess the big thing you notice, firstly, is just how much bigger everything is than when we were back in the Premier League sort of 20 odd years ago, everything is a big event. Everything's a big game. And also it's not just the games that are bigger. It's the players that are bigger as well. Everything is so physical, isn't it? Every, every team are huge. And it's not like when you're in the, in the leagues below where you got, if you, if you're coming up against big lumps, they generally can't play football as well. But you like I say, we played West Ham the other week and Villa, and it's just teams full of absolute monsters physically. And they're all, bloody good footballers as well. So, yeah, it's a big, big step up. Yeah, 100%. You mentioned that game as well against uh, West Ham, a 4-1 defeat, unfortunately. Um, what were your thoughts on that one? Because, of course, I think Ipswich, when I've, when I've seen highlights so far this season, you've looked capable of scoring goals and doing a bit of damage towards teams, but is it just a little bit of um, inexperience, like you mentioned before, about about what the Premier League is like nowadays that, that was your downfall? Yeah, and I think it's... I think the way we play, it's quite. It, it can be quite risky at times, and we play that way, and everything everything has to work. And it, but it, that, on the flip side, it does mean that games can get away from you quite quickly if it if it goes like this. We had one sort of just before Christmas last year away at Leeds in in the Championship, and we ended up with, I think we we're three 0 down at half time, and they got a fourth straight after the break and really took their foot off the gas. But it could have been anything that game. It was a little bit like that at times in the West Ham game, even though probably at 1-1, we were probably the better team and at 3-1, we were the better team, but we didn't take our chances. They did. And when teams have got the quality, like a Bowen and a Kudos who were flying and Antonio dominating up front, it's it's really, it's really difficult to stay in the game sometimes. So we, we know there will be, there will be games like that where we just don't compete well enough and don't, don't get the results. And maybe the game can get away from us and we might lose two or three, but I think with the way we play, you look at the other six games of the season and sort of bar Man City away, which most people are going to struggle there. We're, we're, we're going to be competitive in every in, in sort of the majority of games of the season, but just some of them we won't be. And sometimes it comes when you're least expecting it. Yeah, but that was out. And I think um, it, it's, it's funny to hear someone say that because, I mean, um, there's been teams that are coming up recently the last couple of years who haven't necessarily spent a lot of time in the Premier League. Uh, over the last 20 or 30 years, like, you know, we had Luton last year as well. And um, to hear what the, the the difference in the players, the styles, I think definitely that's more of a, a thing that's happened even the last five or so years. Um, you know, of course, Ipswich being out of the league now for, for a couple of decades. But I think, say, maybe 10 years ago, I don't think the league was as rough as it is now. I think now there's so many teams fighting every single minute for, for the points. But... Um, of course, Kieran McKenna, fantastic to do what he's done with Ipswich. I know you're probably, um, well, maybe sick of talking about him at this point, but he's been a bit of a phenomenon coming through the leagues in, in English football. He's done that fantastic back-to-back -back promotion with Ipswich. Thoughts on him? Yeah, just, well, the best manager we've had probably, well, in my, in my lifetime. Like George Burley did a fantastic job here and we finished fifth in the Premier League, but that was a, a very different different sort of football landscape at the time for McKenna to come in and do what he did really without a huge, obviously it was a big investment when we were in League One, but in Championship, there wasn't really a huge amount of investment there. And it, it wasn't just, I know there's been a few managers that have come up like your Vincent Companies, Russell Martins, and they've, and they've tried to play the same style of football each each week and it just hasn't worked. Where for McKenna, we, we came out of League One where we were playing 60, 65% of the ball, the whole game was in the opposition's half to last year. We we became a more transition side, maybe sort of 50-50 on possession and set ourselves up differently here. And now we're coming to the Premier League and we've had to adapt again. So we've we're very he's very, very pragmatic in what he does, but he has his strong principles and we and we play some 
unbelievable stuff. I think we've scored nearly 200 goals over the last two seasons. So if you include the Cups, we've scored over 100 goals each season for the last two years and got 98 and 96 points. And it's just, yeah, just in- incredible really from how where we'd been and sort of we'd, we'd been on a slow, slow decline really and ended up in League One and we weren't really going anywhere in League One. We were, we'd almost become a mid-table side there and he came in and from the first, from the first week effectively just turned it round and it's been just a straight upward line since then. So, yeah, just an incredible manager who's going to go very, very far. I think he was linked with a lot of jobs in the summer and obviously hugely grateful he didn't go because it would have been a real, I think it'd been a real blow for just general football to see him leave us to go to sort of a Brighton on a back, on the back of the back-to-back promotions. But yeah, just a, yeah, a guy who's going right to the very, very top. Yeah, I mean, I, I can definitely agree with you there as well. I, I mean, I watched uh, a little bit of, of Ipswich last season and, and in terms of championship sides, I think they were just top above everybody else in terms of quality on the ball, um, football and intelligence in the games as well. Um, and I was I really was glad that Kieran McKenna stayed put at Ipswich Town because, uh, you know, I, I really wanted to see that in the Premier League, which um, you can't say a lot of uh, in terms of championship teams coming up into the Premier League the last 10, 15 years. Um, I wanted to see Kieran McKenna's Ipswich Town in the Premier League. I wanted to see if he could replicate the type of form that you had been on the last couple of years. And I think if he'd have gone to, to Brighton and Hove Albion or, or um, if he was linked with Chelsea at one point as well, wasn't he? Um, I think that would have been really disappointing, like you said, from a footballing standpoint, because to go to do two fantastic seasons with Ipswich Town... You've got to try. You've got to make that a trilogy, haven't you? And, and try and, and turn it into something good in the Premier League. And when you came up, um, a lot of people said to me that they'd expect Ipswich to go straight back down again. But for me, that wasn't the case after watching the football last season. Um, of course, this game on, on at the weekend is going to be a big one in terms of the bottom half of the table. Come 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 May. Um, what have you been your thoughts on Everton so far this season? Because we have started to pick up, thankfully, over the past few weeks. But um, you know, Ipswich have, have at times been breathing down our necks a little bit, picking up the odd draw here and there. Yeah, it's well, sort of Everton have been sort of the same old story for the last few years, really, hasn't it? Where sort of no matter what you do, you seem to just get dragged into these relegation battles. Even last year, when sort of points wise, you were sort of nowhere near it, really. You're still place wise, we're down at the bottom. But I don't know, it's obviously Everton are a team that we've got to have in our sights as one of the five or six teams that we've got to try and finish above this year and obviously hope that we manage to get above three of them. And I say when, I'm sure you don't need reminding of it, but that's sort of like the Bournemouth game, the Villa game, when you see sort of, oh, they look like they're finally doing something to tune up and then end up losing both of those games. And it, it does make you think, is this the sort of culmination of the sort of circling the drain of the last few years that even when you think you've got it, you've got this lovely new stadium to move into next year that, is this going to be the year when it finally goes wrong? I don't know. And I, I don't care who goes down as long as it's not us, but it would be a shame to see on that side. But it seems like since Brampthwaite's come back in the team, it's sort of solidified things slightly. And Calvert-Lewin's always a good striker and if he can stay fit, but which he seems to have played a lot more this year than sort of what he has done in previous years, where he seems to be in and out, in and out of the team. But I don't know. It just seems Onana's a big loss in the middle, isn't he? But I'm sure, like I say, I'm sure, I don't need to tell you guys about Everton. I'm sure you know more than me, but it's just, you've, like I say, you're very much a team that we're targeting to try and finish above and Saturday's going to be a huge game in, in that regard. Without a doubt. And, um, you know, uh, the manager, Sean Dyche, has been a bit of a contentious one this season. It was, again, losing those two games when we were 2-0 up, when we were 2-0 up um, and, and, you know, really should have probably taken three, four points from, from those two matches. Um, of course, it, it, it had a bit of an, an echo around the club of whether Sean Dyche was the right man, but the last couple of games before the international break, of course, we got the win over Palace and the draw against Newcastle, which I think really um, I've tried, I've calmed the fan base down a little bit more unless people are calling for his head. What's your opinion on, on Sean Dyche? Because, I mean, I'm not sure if I envy being an Ipswich town at the moment or not, because I feel like... It's always a case of we've got someone who is is a, a, another club going to come and take them off us. Obviously, that's not the case with Sean Tite. So it's nice to be able to relax in that in that sentiment, not having to worry is someone going to come and take our manager. But um, with Tite, he's very he's knuckled down at Everton now for until I think his contract will expire. But um, it does feel like we can do 
a little bit better, even though he has brought some stability back to the club. What's your opinion on on Sean Dyche as as a manager? Um, I, th- I think it, firstly he's obviously he's obviously a very good manager at getting the results he needs to be be where he wants to get to. And I guess it's easy from the outside to look in and say Sean Dyche, Everton have been sort of a bit of a mess off the pitch financially for a few years. You've had. I don't know the times when you've had sort of like a manager buying players, a director of football buying players, an owner trying to put their oar in, and you've you, you've in this situation where each year you're struggling to sort of balance the books financially to enable you to try and put a competitive team out on the field. And if you if you're putting it there, Sean Dyke is probably the a good manager to say, look, just give us three years, stabilize us, get us ready to go, and then at the end of this, thanks, see you later. We, we're now going to still be a Premier League club with the contract situations under control. and We can then try and push on from here. But we've, we've, we were in a similar position with Mick McCarthy a few years ago where he did a fantastic job when he first came in. But the sort of the last two or three seasons, we just sort of were finishing mid-table in the championship and the fans weren't really happy with it. The football was not the best to watch, but he was, well, he was, he was probably outperforming the budget he was given. But, I said, say if, when you're winning ugly, once you stop winning, it's just ugly. And I think that's that can be the problem with Dice there, isn't it? That the style of football isn't something that's going to get you off your seat. He might keep you in the Premier League. Well, he probably will keep you in the Premier League. And if he can do that again, get you into your new stadium, stabilise the contract situation and move on, then he's probably done a good job. But I don't think it's ever one that's going to excite the fans. And when you lose a few games, especially the way you did lose those couple of games and some of the comments after the games where you're sort of saying, oh, this isn't a team I recognise. You sort of, you, you feel a bit like, oh, I can't do any more. It's down to the players when they're on the pitch. You think, oh, this, is, this isn't this is normally his style. His, normally start, his normal style is like we are all in sort of tent pissing out rather than the other way. So, yeah, it's, uh, I, say, I, I can see why he's probably a good manager for the club at the moment, but I can also see why fans might go to the games and be despondent, not enjoy it. Maybe, maybe want to move on to somebody else and go from there. But I don't know. How does that tally up with your view on it? Yeah, I mean, it's funny enough. I, I, I had to think about it today, just where the the, the sort of um, I, I thought about. Uh, usually, when you support when you support a club uh, and you're not doing well, there's always you can just at the most random times have random thoughts of what if this happens? What if that happens? And you can get lost in it a little bit. Um, we're recording this on Wednesday and it's the day that obviously Thomas Tuchel got announced as the England manager. One that has been mentioned was Lee Carsley, an, an awful lot. Um, you know, obviously he he was caretaker manager for England for, for a spell. Take took a couple of games as England coach um, and did pretty well in some of them, minus the Greece game. He was one that was being, his name was being shouted out a little bit by Evertonians. And I know in my circle as well, they've spoken, would would we like him? Um, and I thought, it, it could be an attractive thing for us to do. He could come in, he could play some good football. He played for the club as well for a time. Um, someone, who, a young manager who would bring through youth players and, you know, try and create a different style of football and maybe a better ethic at Everton. And then I thought, what if it all goes wrong in the first season? What if it gets to March and we're rock bottom we're four points away out the, from getting out of the drop zone, and then we have to go and get another firefighter in. And it, I thought about it, and there's a little bit of dread there that I wouldn't have thought about five years ago in terms of do we take a risk at this point in time? If we do, is anyone the right man for Everton? Because as you mentioned there, Joe, there's um, it, it's a very, very weird situation at the club now to have a fantastic billion pound stadium and then have a, such a rubbish team on the pitch and um such a rubbish recent history it's it's a weird it's a weird time to be an Evertonian but mm. um going on to personnel a little bit more let's talk about some some of the star men for Ipswich uh, firstly who you think will will go into the the lineup uh, for the Everton match and also who's the big danger man for Ipswich at the moment um, so the team is probably going to be sort of Arab, Juric in goal, then a back four of... There's question marks over right back at the moment because Axel Twinsaby is injured. So sort of like Harry Clark or Ben Johnson, Darrow Shea, Jacob Greaves, Leif Davis left back, be Sam Morsey and Calvin Phillips in the middle. Right wing will either be Wes Burns or Cheo Ogbene. Then it's likely to be Amari Hutchinson, Jack Clark or Sammy Smodix, and then Liam Delap up front. So... 
I guess the two names jumping out as a danger men in that team at the moment are sort of Leif Davis, who is sort of the assist king, and our our whole left hand side is him. And then Liam Delap, who's already scored four goals this season and sort of looked a real handful, um, had a good game for England under 21s last Friday, but was suspended for the game last night. And they're sort of the, the two form players in the team at the moment. Amari Hutchinson's sort of starting to find his feet at this level, but it's a it's a big jump up for him. And that, but yeah, like I say, we're, we're, we're starting to get settled in the team. I think we're in quite a decent position, bearing in mind we've had to bring in sort of effectively there'd be eight new players in the starting eleven from last season and a hundred odd million quid spent. And what our superpower has been over the last couple of years has been the sort of partnerships on the pitch, the connections, the game model, the patterns of play. And each week that goes by, you imagine they're going to be getting stronger in the team. So the fact that we're seven games in and we're outside the relegation zone, I think by a point or goal difference, effectively shortening the season from a 38-game season to a 31-game season with a more settled team. I think we're in quite a nice position in that regard. Yeah, without a doubt. And I mean, I was I was going to mention him, actually, because I think um, watching the championship last season, Leif Davis was one that really did stand out to me um, in that in that, uh, in that that Ipswich side. So, yeah, he's he's one that, may, you know, uh, definitely a player that Everton could use, I think, at the moment. We're very short of fullback, um, and he's got a lot of quality and I think uh, it, it'll be a good good uh, way to look because obviously it's still so early on in the season it'll be a good um, test for him to come up into the Premier League and see how he can play and if Ipswich do stay up I'm sure it'll be a huge um, part of that so um, yeah just before we go on to our quiz at the end score predictions for the game um, I've got to predict we're going to get a win. Like we've been, we've been fantastic, Portman Road over the last. It has to come at some point, though, surely. Yeah, you know. like over the last two seasons, we've I think we've only lost one home game in each season. We've lost we lost once in League One at home, once in Championship at home. We've so far lost once in the Premier League at home, but I imagine that we might lose more than once at home this season. But we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I, I think at, at Portman Road we're going to give anyone a game, and I, that's how I say we'll say we'll win maybe three one, three two. Mm. I think for us it'll be a tough one because last year on most of our uh, some of our best results were away from home. This season it's not been quite the same same way. Um, the Leicester game away where we we let that slip, we were one 0 up, we drew one all. Um, obviously the Villa game, and and I think to be honest, it, it's a game that we should be going into and winning. But I think for the neutral, it's quite a good one because both sides. I mean, if Ipswich win this one at the, the weekend, then. You know they're really putting the cat amongst the pigeons in terms of, you know, not lying down and, and not being that team that that twentieth team that are going to be that everyone thought maybe at the start of the season would be the whipping boys and that's not been the case at all. And I think for Ipswich it's a very important game to put a, a marker in the ground to say okay we've played our hard games we played Liverpool we played Manchester City, um we've had the tough games we've had the losses and the draws but I think a win for Ipswich in this one could be absolutely massive. So um, of course. Uh, get your score predictions in in the comment section down below. And right before we go on to our lineup quiz that we do at the end of every episode, Joe, um, I'm just going to put a message out there for the comment section as I did in the last one. Players who've played for both Ipswich and Everton, make sure you get them down in the comment section down below. And I'll read out some of the answers after the quiz. So today's quiz, Joe, uh, 13th of October 2001, Ipswich nil, Everton nil. Um, it's the year I was born, so I would have absolutely no chance, probably, in, uh, in naming most of the 11. But how many of the Ipswich 11 and subs can you name? Um, what do you want me to go through and see what I can get? So I imagine... Yeah, go through, see what you can get, and um, yeah. I'll, I'll keep a market of how many you can get. Okay, in goal, I'd imagine it would be Matteo Serini, yeah. right back. Uh, yeah, he's, he's uh, off to a flyer. Matteo Serini was in goal. Chris Makin. Yeah, um, centre-back. No, centre back was he? Um, Herman Horiderson. Yeah. John McGreal. Yeah, you, you're having the best one so far. I'm not going to uh, lie. The, the record we've had, we've had 10 in the last two episodes Newcastle I, and, oh, and Aston Villa. Is that including subs? Be, but... um, 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 you, can name, you can name the subs, yeah, if you want to. But if you can name the full 11, I'll be very surprised. Yeah. Um, Jamie Clapham, Jermaine Wright, Matt Holland. Right. So we. Alan was Armstrong. No... Who was the one you said before? Because at left back, there was something different. Jermaine Wright and Matt Holland, you've got right, yeah? So you're um, on six at the moment. Jamie Clapham. No, he wasn't in the, in the team, no. Um, Alan Armstrong. Yeah, up front, yeah. Um, 
six taper router. Mm, who did you say? Six taper router. No, no. no. Fididi George. No. There was oh sorry yeah Fenidi Fenidi that's a hard one to pronounce isn't it Fenidi George did come on in the seventy seventh minute so you've actually got a sub there as well um, yeah I'm just trying not to embarrass myself by saying people that would have left by that point um, maybe Titus Bramble no Titus Bramble wasn't in the team on this one and Mark Venus uh, uh, no oh Mark Venus sorry yeah yeah Mark Venus so there's your tenth one more. I broke the record. <laughs> what, what position am I looking for? Another striker. You've got is it? a midfielder, one of the two midfielders left to go, uh, and you've got two. You've got a midfielder slash forward. So I'm oh. guessing like an attacking midfielder, and then a striker. Um, I, I forgot who. I think Marcus Stewart was injured by then. Martin Royce. Martin See Royce there. was, and Marcus Stewart was in the team as well, oh, Joe. Dear. So you've actually broken the record there, and you're on top now for all oh, the teams nice. that have come in. Um, you could have had as well, Fabian Wilness oh, came God. on for Chris Macon in the yeah. 46th minute. Uh, must have been an injury. Brannigan, Cunago, and Naylor were unused substitutes okay. in that one. I don't know uh, if if, uh, if their names mean anything to you. Yeah, the they, Premier League around me, that yeah. point <laughs> is a tough one for me, because obviously I just go off what older family relatives have said. Everton team was a bit was a bit of an um bit of an iconic one there was a couple of, of, of big Everton players playing for us at that moment there was uh Paul Gerrard in goal who of course he I'm spoiling it switch. but a former Ipswich man as well um Gary Naismith Alessandro Pistoni of course we had the the likes of Mark Pembridge who I only Duncan found Ferguson out the other day. and Kevin Campbell up front was it back then Kevin Campbell and uh, and Ferguson and also Thomas Radzinski as well um I only found out last week as well, Mark Pembridge is one of the, the highest scoring Welshmen in Premier League history, which is a, a mad one for your trivia, if you ever get it. And just before we finish, I uh, hope you got them down in the comments section down below, but can you name any more Ipswich and Everton players? Marcus Bent. Marcus Bent was one, yeah. He he, he played sort of uh, early Moyes era, and he was yeah. replaced, I think, by Andy Johnson. Yeah, Paul Gerrard, obviously. We've had him, haven't we? You could have had, um, there was actually two more goalkeepers as well. One on the books at Everton now, Asmir Begovic. Oh, yeah, and Richard Wright. And Richard Wright, yeah, who I think, is he at City? Or was it, did he end his career at City? Or was it yeah, he's still, or? There as a, he's still there as a coach as well, actually. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Uh, and of course, Andros Townsend as well. I never knew oh, he yeah, actually played have. for Ipswich Town. Yeah, he was uh, only on loan for when he was very young. Yeah, and one who uh, probably you'd maybe say is the best out of the lot, David Unsworth. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. former Evan, one of the highest scoring players we've had as well because he took penalties but um, yeah thank you so much for joining us today Joe best of luck for the game on Saturday where can we find all of your content at Blue Monday yeah just if you I think on Twitter it's at Blue Monday ITFC and it's got links to everything from there but yeah and it, we'll be doing a pre-match show on Thursday night at 8 o'clock and a post-match show Sunday at 8 o'clock so if you want to come and see what we've got to say about you and generally if we get more viewers on Sunday, it'll be because we've had a bad result and you want to come and see how that goes. Mm -hmm. So we'll go from there. But now hopefully it's a good game. Best team wins and we can both stay up this season. Amazing. I hope so. Anyway, um, it'd be nice. It'd be nice to see. Um, of course, this is one that uh, will be very, very important going, going towards the, the end of the season. So best of luck, Joe. Uh, make sure, of course, you do, as I said, go and look out for Blue Monday Ipswich Town podcast. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe to the Toffee Blues. Comment your score predictions down below and I'll see you in the next one.